Hello, this is Solar PVTV from World Future Energy Summit 2017 from Abu Dhabi. We are together with the father of the renewable energy law, Hans Josef Fell, former uh, member of the German parliament. I think the person uh, thanks to whom we are all here. And we are together with uh, Tom Jao, who manages the sales activities of solar business uh, for BYD, the company which had three dreams recently introduced the new fourth dream and uh, one of the companies which is um, founded by visionary founder Wang Chuanfu, the person who would like to change the world towards sustainable future. So uh, at the beginning, so the title of our uh, panel discussion is the clean future of Africa starts today. So maybe at the beginning I will ask um, Hans very shortly, could you tell us what is your current parkour, yes, and why you are here actually, and how do you see the development of solar energy but also clean energies in Africa, and do you believe that the clean energy future starts today, or maybe not? It is a great pleasure to stay here. I arrived last week to take part of the IRENA conference, the great governmental board for renewable energies. We founded it in 2009 and we as a parliamentarians in Germany worked hard to create such a governmental board. It is necessary because we have a governmental board of oil, International Energy Agency, we have one for nuclear, nuclear atomic agency, but not yet one for renewables. Though I'm very happy, it is great. 150 nations take part within five years, and there's a great movement. And so I see it now, the World Future Summit, to look what is the technology for the future. I see a lot of them. Some people, some companies believe that the future would be in the past with oil, with natural gas, with coal and with nuclear, but it isn't. The future is today, we see it here. Today is solar, wind, hydro. We see it with bioenergy and geothermal. That's the future. And often we were told this new technologies would be too expensive. Africa could not take part. They would be too poor. It isn't. Since we organized in 2000 the German feed in tariff law, we could create a mass production, many innovations, many companies like BID and others invested and the price dropped down. Today, renewable energy, solar and wind, is not only the cheapest energy option when we compare new investment with new investment. In the last month, the drop down of solar even brought them in 30 countries of the world. Solar investment and electricity is cheaper than existing coal power stations. This is a new movement in the world. Though when you want to create for Africa and elsewhere in the world energy to fight against poverty, to bring light into the huts where not light is in the night, solar is the cheapest option. And not only the cheapest, it is the fastest option to do it. We do not need big grid systems, we can directly with the panels to the huts and bring the light to the houses. Clean technologies are the best option, the fastest, the innovativest, the option that every people can take part, not only the richest one. And this is a new driver for clean Africa. So thank you so much, uh, Hans, for this introduction. I think it's uh, so important to listen to these words uh, from a dreamer, actually. This was a dreamer 20 years ago who was dreaming about solar energy. Everybody in Germany was laughing at him at the beginning, yes? 
and uh, he told me the whole story how he was introducing the renewable energy law, how they tried to push it through the parliament, yes? So even the people from the government, they didn't know that they are working on the law just to push it. And then Germany became like an example for Europe and afterwards for the whole world. And now I would like to ask uh, Tom Zhao. So it's a very interesting story also of BYD because uh, BYD was created by Wang Chuanfu a couple of years, of years ago. And he didn't think about becoming like, you know, just sales guy, like a lot of people in China. But he had a dream. Afterwards, he had three dreams. Now he has four dreams. And uh, I believe, Tom, it, uh, you have to be really proud, yes, to work with uh, Mr. Wang Chuanfu. And I would like to ask you, how do you imagine to introduce this, this dream to Africa? And do you believe that the clean future of Africa started today? Yeah, I, we have been uh, looking uh, at the uh, Africa uh, markets uh, for a long time. And now is the, uh, the time that uh, we can uh, vastly uh, introduce the uh, total renewable energy solution to this continent. Okay, uh, you know, now okay, uh, the countries in Africa um, actually is already in the very fast track uh, developing. Uh, okay, so we are seeing uh, um, pretty uh, high uh, GDP growth uh, uh, over the years, right? So we are actually uh, uh, seeing a very aggressive, very uh, higher opportunity in, in, in those countries. So um, uh, when I talk to uh, several okay, uh, uh, leadership people in those countries, especially uh, the prince right, of Nigeria, okay, uh, last night we had a very good talk. So uh, they actually uh, really shot the power. Okay? The country is uh, pretty rich because they have a lot of the oil, gas, right? but they don't have the enough power. And the economic development grows, they need the power, okay? So um, uh, the common condition in Africa countries is uh, the green network, okay, uh, supply is not really well. And uh, to be honest, okay, uh, traditional power, okay, uh, is a good choice for them, but uh, you know, uh, the uh, carbon emission is a big concern. So, uh, you know, we from China, okay, China over the last 30 years development, right, now it's a lot of problem, right, like the uh, PM 2.5, right, like, like kind of the uh, very bad living environment in the main cities. So we really do not want, okay, to see Africa, okay, countries uh, experience a similar, situ uh, how to say, uh, situation that uh, China is having today. So uh, we uh, actually uh, promote the total solution for this uh, uh, region. One is the uh, solar, but solar is uh, definitely, we encourage, we encourage the DG, the distributed power generation, okay, uh, solution, which is uh, combining with the energy storage, okay, because solar can only provide a four hours or five hours power a day, which is uh, not efficient enough for the people, which is uh, short of power, right, because they use the power 24 hours, maybe nighttime, right, but there's no sunlight, right? So that's why storage system is very, very important for them. It can be, you know, generate power locally and constantly, which is uh, save a lot of the, uh, how to say, uh, cost on the, uh, you know, uh, long-term transmission, right? This one uh, is the very, very good, uh, okay, uh, methodology for those countries in uh, uh, Africa countries, right? So this is uh, something that we think is the main area uh, we can contribute. Second one is the uh, uh, transportation, right? The transportation actually is, uh, you know, uh, uh, consume a lot of the oil and gas, right? Then, uh, to be honest, the uh, uh, low, low, low city has a lot of the uh, uh, populations, right? You can see it's very crowded, and it's, uh, how to see, it's very foggy, and, uh, you know, the PM 2.5 is becoming, uh, you know, a uh, risk concern, right? So if you go to the, uh, you know, uh, the capital of uh, Nigeria, you, you see the air uh, is not that clear. So which, how can we avoid that? Uh, try to avoid the case that okay, uh, Beijing or Shanghai has been experienced that okay, uh, they actually have over developed on this uh, gasoline vehicle. So now is the time that okay, uh, the Chinese government strongly encouraged to uh, maximize the electric vehicle, right? Because the electric vehicle has the zero emission, right? Then okay, uh, the key thing is uh, when you want to uh, okay, uh, maximize the usage of uh, electric vehicle to the market, then where's the power coming from, right? Are you going to build okay, more thermal power plant to generate more emission? Or are you going to try to uh, uh, concentrate on those kind of development of the uh, green energy, right? So that's why the 
green energy source of the green energy uh, power generation plus the energy storage will help to provide okay enough clean energy to maximize the uh, electric vehicle okay uh, uh, for those kind of developing countries. So this one is uh, one of the uh, key area. The uh, 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 very important uh, okay area that people might ignore is the uh, number of car in the city actually is also contribute uh, you know uh, the congestion problem. Congestion problem means what? Means a uh, traffic jam, okay, in the peak hour, rush hour, and this is a result in okay, uh, low efficiency of the uh, transporting system and also generate uh, higher emission, right, for the city. So that's why we also come out with a new solution that we call the real transportation system for the city. So this transport position system is uh, developing based on technology of electric vehicle, electric bus, using the the power from a uh, okay, uh, hybrid solution, either from the uh, grid networks or from the battery as well, right? So this system actually is uh, if you can develop uh, very well in the city, then uh, it can provide the more convenience for the people staying in the city that they might not really encourage to buy the car, right? Like a benchmark, like a Japan, like Singapore, like Hong Kong, right? You didn't see uh, any kind of the, uh, uh, how to say, a big uh, traffic problem is because but the, the city of the population is very high as well. Then, okay, uh, uh, you, you, because they have a very good, okay, how to say, the uh, real transport system for the, for the city. Then this one uh, actually is, uh, you know, help the city to try to minimize, okay, the number of the cars being held, okay, to the city. So you list, uh, use these two uh, strategy, focus on the uh, electrified vehicle, meanwhile, okay, try to develop the real transport system to minimize the number of cars hold to the city, it is will provide the long-term sustainable, okay, a development uh, way for the city to avoid this kind of the uh, PM 2.5 issue in the long term, in the long run. So this is uh, we talk about the uh, overall solution that BYD is going to bring to the uh, to the uh, 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 the markets that okay from a power generation of uh, solar to the energy storage and to the electric vehicle and to the you know uh, real transparent system. So this is something that we are heavily promote, okay, uh, promoting this uh, solution in Chinese city now, like Beijing, Shanghai, right? This is a more than 30 million people city, right? Then uh, we believe, okay, uh, this is, uh, shall be uh, very well come by the, uh, uh, those kind of the main cities in Africa as well. So from the conversation last night with the Prince of uh, Nigeria, he showed strong interest on, uh, on that, I believe, okay, uh, his requirement is a common requirement uh, uh, among the uh, African countries, right? So we believe there's a very, very great potential, okay, to adopt this the total solution, okay, to this region. And now I would like to ask uh, Hans, because um, you have the very interesting long story in clean energies, but you have also some new ideas, some new projects. And uh, could you tell us more about uh, these ideas and how would you imagine to introduce these ideas in Africa. Africa is very important to look to the challenges of Africa, Europe and the whole world. We see it at the moment an increasing of the crisis. We see it in Europe. More and more millions of refugees come from Africa to Europe and we have big discussions about it. There are two reasons why refugees come. One is war and terrorism. And we see mostly where the oil is, is the war. This means we have already limited resources and of limited resources many people fight and make wars. We cannot make a war about solar radiation and wind. It is impossible to switch to solar and wind energy to replace natural gas, oil, coal, and nuclear is the basic for peace in the world. And the second point is millions of the refugees of Africa are coming because they lose their homelands. They cannot live there. Climate warming leads to less agricultural land. The desertification goes on. Arid land, they cannot make 
agriculture, they have no food, no income. We must fight against climate warming. And this is the idea to make now solar industry not only for electricity. That is one part for fighting against climate warming because we have a zero emission technology that replaces oil and gas with emissions what pollutes the climate. That's one point of solar. But we can do much more with the solar industry to green up the lands what is now degreened. Take the photovoltaic farms, make them high up standard that the tractor or the people can work under the modules, that they can make more food and biofuels to have an income. The photovoltaic modules will shadow the area and then we have saving the water in the soil. When we near the oceans, we can take the solar electricity to desalinate the marine water and we have water for the land to make more agriculture. And we can take the solar electricity as well far away from the oceans to clean the polluted water in the rivers. New technologies are able to do it. So we can have more water for drinkable for the people and for agriculture. So you see, we can create greening up the areas. And I could see some. I have pictures from a new photovoltaic area in the desert of Gobi in China. And I could see they plant little trees under the modules in the desert of Kobe. And the people have an income. I could see the workers. They have groceries, they have flowers for the cities. They have an income. The people can live in the homelands where they lost before this. So come to greening up the deserts, greening up the degraded land. And this has another point. When we green the degraded land, then we take out many huge amounts of carbon from the atmosphere and store it in the soil, in the plants, in the trees. This is organizing carbon sinks parallel to zero emission with energy from solar and wind. This combined strategy leads that we even can reduce the carbon concentration in the atmosphere and we have a chance not only to stop climate warming, to reduce the climate temperature, to come to a livable planet for all the people. And Africa is a key issue, the key country to do it. So, Tom, I saw you are excited, yes, yeah. <laughs> by the words of Hans Josef. Could you, could you comment, actually, on that? The uh, renewable energy, like solar, definitely is the best choice for, in, for the uh, Africa countries. And uh, uh, with the aggressive okay, uh, technology okay, upgrading, right, result in the more aggressive okay, uh, cost reduction for the uh, solar, right? And also for the storage technology as well, right? Because we are on that technology, and... Uh, is driving uh, by the electric vehicle. So the expansion of capacity, okay, make the uh, battery, rechargeable battery, right, cost with a very aggressive learning curve. So this is one uh, also eventually, okay, uh, we will duplicate the similar, okay, uh, cost uh, reduction trend as the uh, solar has been experienced, okay, uh, this year's. So make the renewable energy with the storage will be a very, how to see, cheap, okay, uh, energy solution, right? For the people, so uh, it is good. Okay, uh, for you know uh, the developing country, uh, like uh, 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 <coughs> uh, many uh, uh, cities, many cities, right? Okay, uh, in uh, Africa. So uh, this is uh, uh, the key thing is, uh, however, we need a policy, okay, from the government to encourage these renewable energy uh, solutions, right? So it may not be a feeding tariff, but feeding tariff may not be on solar. Maybe some uh, initial subsidies, right? for the uh, combined solution, right, in the beginning. 
Then, okay, once the market go to the volume, and we identify, okay, the right, okay, business model, then we definitely uh, can also attract a lot of the uh, international investment, okay, to try to build more capacity of renewable energy solution or system to the countries. So this one uh, will make those countries starting from a higher percentage of renewable energy in the beginning, okay? So this is something that we think this is really for the long-term sustainable growth uh, in the future. Yes. I would like to just finish with uh, one very easy question, yes? I will not ask you guys if it's possible that Africa can run 100% of renewables. I will ask you how to make it and when it will happen. Now it is easy to come to 100% renewable Africa. First is, we have big examples who do it already. They show that 100% renewable is possible. The country Costa Rica last year had 250 days last year where they served the whole energy only with renewables. They show we can do it. As well as a lot of villages and others. And this is one point. Africa should invest in the rural areas, in the off-grid areas, in decentralized solar home systems. Batteries charged with mobile phone, organized, the paying. It's a very low price, much cheaper than the diesel generators what they have. Though we can clean up it very fast. I know a company from Germany. They invested in 250,000 huts in Africa in one year, solar home systems. But we have as well big centers, Cairo, Lagos, and others. Yes, small devices are even in this cities interesting but we should add it with big devices with big wind farms with big solar fields and we should organize it immediately with a combination you mentioned it Tom a combination of storage that the grid operator will see the investors bring the electricity what the demand of the consumers need every hour the year complete 100% renewable served that is now possible because the technologies are ripe the battery prices are falling down very very fast as it did thanks to BYD yes and the battery prices now give us the best options and we must Organize it with a good policy visit. The policy has different elements. One is help the investors that it is more easy for them. In on-grid systems, organize a good fit in tariff system, not a tendering system. Tenders have a lot of problems. Tenders are big ones. The companies fight it. They beg the government to win the tender. And the minister says, oh, he wants for me that he wins the tender. Corruption is clear near by side of tendering. Fight against corruption means make it with a fit-in tariff. It's easier. And then fit-in tariff also stimulates small and medium companies, private people. They can take part in tendering. Only big monopolies, big financiers can take part. We must spread it to decentralize to the people that everyone can take part. But to help the investors is only one point. We must finish the crazy situation that the polluting technologies are highly subsidized. Some people believe Renewables would be highly subsidized. It isn't. Oil, gas, nuclear, coal is highly subsidized. 500 billion US dollar public money flowed last year 
to subsidizing oil and also fossil and nuclear business. No, only f f fossil business. Nuclear, the same amount about. And only 100 billion US dollars flowed to renewables. So cancel the subsidizing. This saves your public budget. You need your public budget for education, for healthcare, and other important issues, and not for subsidizing the polluting technologies that makes only problems. Every ton of carbon emission to the atmosphere is subsidized worldwide with 100 US dollar. What a crazy system. We fight against air pollution and against climate protection and subsidizing the investors to do it. So this helps. And the third point is very important. Create education. Teach the people the technologies, but not only the technologies, how to do it. How to do it in a cultural way. How to organize it. How to fight against poverty. How to create more income for the people with greening up the areas with photovoltaics and trees and with plants, food, and biofuels. All is possible this, when we go on with the governments, then we have a fast increasing. The time is over that the old business would be a competition against it. The old fossil and nuclear business can go on only with highly subsidizing of public budgets. Otherwise, they have no chance. Cancel subsidizing, everyone will go on only into renewables and in clean technologies. That's the point. And uh, we have to finish uh, this discussion. And I would like to say something very interesting because uh, here you have the banner of Influencers Forum that we start uh, actually kick off today. And the idea is really to bring together the industry, policy decision makers, financial guys, but also young people. So these are the stars of the future. Uh, Million solar stars, yes. So actually, uh, together we will give a solar system to Kenyan uh, school. We're going to take solar panels and arrays to the schools, and also we're planning to take the solar-powered reading lights so that all of the kids will be able to read in the evenings to increase literacy because there's a direct correlation between electricity availability and literacy and school performance. So we're going to try to enhance the education in these developing countries as well as provide a healthy source of light as opposed to the kerosene lamps that are currently being used, which cause cancer and, and also house fires. I didn't foresee that. I didn't foresee that. But as we have uh, actually the new stars, I would like to ask the new stars, yes? Are you happy that you can contribute and to bring electricity to Africa, to Kenya, and then afterwards 200% uh, around the globe? We all are very excited to be able to bring these solar lights to Kenya and that the school is involving us instead of just raising money. All, most of grade eight is going to Kenya. We're going to be installing these solar panels ourselves into the schools and for the children. We're going to be donating our old books, old clothes to these children who are less fortunate. And I think we're all really excited to be able to do this for other people. You are excited also, yes? <laughs> I'm definitely excited because looking at like this place, like lights are like everywhere. It's just something that we don't even think of because it's just obviously always there. But for those people that aren't less so fortunate like us, like it could just be like a stray of like gold for them. It's just as precious as that. What about you? Uh, I think it's an amazing opportunity to give uh, kids that um, have to work every single day without any electricity or any lights, um, and then they can learn how to read and work while with... Are you proud to be part of the project? Yes, I'm so proud that I can help other um, people in Kenya um, for solar um, power and yeah. Oh, it's good, like first time on TV, yes? <laughs> and also such an audience. And what about you? I'm happy that both of us can benefit from this and it's an amazing opportunity for us. Although um, I'm in high school and I'm not going with them, I would say that I'm very proud to collaborate with them and the MSS initiative 
which encourages environmental sustainability and leadership. And now uh, let me pro uh, present uh, Adam Hall. So actually we met, uh, like everything in life is happening by accident, yes? But when we have the same DNA, we always are going in the same direction. So we met uh, with Adam in Shanghai. He was in, um, installing solar panels on the school in Shanghai. Afterwards, he came to Dubai. He's uh, building now the team here in Dubai. So Adam, what's up? What's next? Well, immediately uh, our trip to Kenya to uh, work with the school in the Tsavo region uh, with these kids and so excited to roll this program out in Kenya and uh, Nigeria here uh, very soon. Um, and we are in Shanghai, uh, we're in the States, in Denver, Colorado, uh, in Hawaii as well. And we're looking to roll out into schools around the world and to engage students like these. Uh, the two uh, important men behind, um, we're basically, we're, we're looking at solar on a model scale. So having students work with solar lights and uh, solar cars and solar trains hopefully soon and uh, solar buses. Uh, and uh, figuring out the science and the math behind how solar works on a small scale. And then we can talk about scaling up to a 10 kilowatt system on a school or a megawatt. We're looking at a 1.4 megawatt system at uh, Universal American School. So we'd like to engage uh, students with uh, the data monitoring behind that and yeah, uh, work with fine gentlemen like this to, to roll the program out around the world. Um, and if I could uh, say we're big fans of Dr. Jane Goodall. Uh, this program is a program that's an offshoot of Roots and Shoots, uh, which yeah, we met a few days ago. Yes, unbelievable to uh, meet with her again, and uh, the sparkle in her eyes. She's a true gift to us, and we're very uh, fortunate to have her behind us in our efforts. Thank you so much. Uh, last thing, uh, I would like to invite the audience for the family photo.